Well, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be talking about rendering and we're going to turn this into this. This is part of a perfume bottle series that I'm doing over on Patreon where we're taking this perfume bottle and we're putting it into a bunch of different effects. And this is one of them. So if you're interested about how I did the actual build, you can check that out on Patreon. But for this one, I thought, hey, it's summer, the sun is shining. What better time to kind of do a free YouTube tutorial on rendering than right now. So if you're ready, let's jump in and let's check it out. Hey everyone, so I'm in Houdini 19.5.534. Um, I was in the, I was on the latest Houdini production build, but was having some issues, so downgraded, and I still have some issues, but it's actually caused by Redshift, not by Houdini, but I am on this build anyway. Uh, this would work pretty much in any of the latest builds with the later versions of Redshift. So let's jump in and let's take a look. We will be rendering this scene. Um, so we'll just kind of pick a frame where we get some cool inflated things. If you want to see how we build this inflated things, you can jump over onto my Patreon where you can grab the hip file from this tutorial, as well as there are tutorials on how I built the whole inflation setup and the perfume bottle and everything else. So just to quickly give a kind of overview of what I have in my scene, I have the perfume bottle bottle here where I built the perfume bottle procedurally and then I've just split it out into different containers here so if I turn these off I have the bottle then I have uh, two different labels which we will talk about when we're rendering and then I have the cap over here and then finally I have the vellum itself now we're not going to focus too much on the materials of the bottle itself um, I'll talk about them briefly but we'll mainly be talking about the lighting of the general scene and the vellum and how we can get that lit up my background image here is actually just a grid behind this um, and that was because there are some small little gaps over here from the build and so when you add this in with a material you don't see them at all so that just helps uh, kind of fill in those gaps at the moment I have a 16 by 9 I'm actually going to change this um, to be a square camera uh, let's make it 1080 by 1080 and then we can just zoom in a little bit and the only reason I'm going to do that is so that it's a bit easier to kind of fit it into my screen when I'm rendering and everything else kind of remains the same. So I'm going to split left and right and over here I can just grab my Redshift render view. All right, so this is what we get by default. It looks fairly horrendous because we have no material on our vellum. We have some materials on the bottle from um, the previous kind of setup, but let's get a general light and a general material. So first let's jump into our materials and here's what I have going for the bottle itself. But uh, let's just create a new material. So we'll use an RS material builder. And we'll call this vellum. I can make this one blue, whatever, doesn't matter. Sometimes I just like to color them random colors so that it looks a little bit cooler. And for this one, what I'm gonna do is just kind of give it um, a whitish orangey color and turn up the roughness. And let's just make sure that it's applied. Which does not look like okay it has applied so we're getting that and now we need a light so let's just create an rs light and this is going to be our main light source jump out of our camera here i'm going to turn this into a disc and let's make it a little bit bigger so what i want to do now is just kind of get it into a position where it's kind of off to the side so i get these nice shadows that uh, kind of pronounce the shape i'm going to turn it off in the viewport that is good. Now I have this jerky motion. This is not from the stream. This is because Redshift is really uh, making some weird stuff on my computer. All right, so that's starting to look good, but now obviously this is still not producing enough light. And so what I can do here is just make this even bigger and I'm gonna go really big, something like 10. And this just kind of helps fill out um, some of these shadows as well and wraps around the object. So I can turn this down a lot. All right, so I think that's starting to look a little bit better. And for now, let's actually turn off this bottle and maybe it'll render a little bit faster. So we can go into our vellum and now we can start to play with this material. Now already it's kind of looking pretty cool, but I can turn this down and just get a little bit more uh, warmth in there. And maybe this light, I want it to be even bigger. Now I can turn up the intensity, but what I find when I turn the light bigger, I get slightly softer shadows that wrap around these shapes and it makes it a little bit nicer. Whereas if I just make this object really small and I pump this up, you can see how harsh these shadows are on these edges and you start to kind of pick up these kind of weird looking vibes. Um, whereas if I make this small, but then this big, 
it starts, it's a lot more subtle and smooth around these edges. And I found that this looked a lot nicer. So then I can also just kind of jump back in here and just play with this. Now what I'm actually going to use is I'm going to use a RS material and this is the old one. And when I want to use this backlight translucency, I prefer to use this because setting it up in the standard material is a few more hoops than is necessary, I feel. And this kind of gets me there just as nicely. And the reason I like to use this sometimes is it just helps to push these shadows if I'm struggling and if I push it too much you can see how these shadows are like really bright now but if I just pull it a little bit I can kind of control the shadow amount uh, with this and it, it looks pretty good all right so I restarted my computer and now it is a lot faster you can see it's refreshing and if I jump into my materials and I change something I get feedback a lot faster now it's not the VRAM thing because I tried the latest version of Redshift, which supposedly fixed it, as well as I have two graphics cards and one of them is running Redshift, the other one is running my system. So it shouldn't be doing that. Anyway, um, this is looking cool. It's like a super kind of neon looking vibe, which is not what I was going for. I just want this to kind of alleviate some of my harsh shadows. And I don't know if this is the best way to do this, but I kind of found that it worked. Something else we can do is just grab this light and just create a full light and this one let's make that smaller this one I don't need to be so big maybe we'll just make a small light of this and this one I just want to be on the side so if I turn off my main light and just have a look at this full light you can see now it's filling in here but I want it to be near the bottom here So these shadows are now being filled out with this. So if I have a look at my main light, it's coming from the top and then this fill light is just filling in these shadows. And this can be something really subtle like two, just to kind of help these super deep shadows. And we can also then just kind of change up uh, this and play as much as we like. This light's a little bit brighter, again, by just increasing the size of it because it's 3D, I can. I'm not limited by physics. The next thing I wanted to do with this material was to add a bump. So I'm just gonna add a bump map. And this just kind of gives this cloth a little bit more realism and just gives it a little bit more texture. So I'm gonna add a RS texture here, pipe that in. And for this, what I'm going to use is this OD asset library. And I have some texturing XYZ. These are really cool uh, patterns and cloth. I really like these for cloth. I found they are really kind of like high res. Um, I'll just grab an ABS and plug this into the scale. This just lets me scale everything with a slider, which I find a little bit easier. And let's just see this refreshed so I can see what it looks like. So you can see the scale of it now. That looks pretty good. Maybe it's a little bit too big. You can see here that it's quite a large texture. So let's just jump it up to 44. And that's starting to look a little bit better. So I can pop this out to make this a little bit easier to see. Do a quick bucket render. So you can see that this bump map gives it uh, just kind of a little bit more flavor and texture. Now, uh, let's set this to raw. Just make sure that it's picking the right one. And this doesn't need to be so big. Maybe we can turn this down a lot. Let's turn off bucket rendering. Just get this real subtle kind of look here. This may still be too big. We'll go down to 0.1. And in our material, let's just, we want this to be a bit brighter overall. Just crank our lights a little bit more. All right, so that's starting to look a little bit better. I think this is still too high and maybe we can just push this up. Okay, so it's starting to get a little bit closer to where I was. I did do a little bit of post on mine where I pulled out some of this yellow um, and we can maybe try and do it over here. And then we can turn this light down a little bit. The other thing that's um, sometimes nice to add is you can add a Fresnel node, um, but you can also add in Sheen. So sometimes it's nice to add a little bit of Sheen. So if you go too big with Sheen, kind of, uh, overwrites everything but you kind of get this really nice softness to it sometimes I just like to add in a little bit of it to see what that looks like 
So like that just kind of adds a little bit of softness to the overall thing. And I think that's how I ended up with this texture on here. And you can see without this background node, you get these little black gaps. Whereas with this background, uh, you don't notice them as much. They kind of just hidden there. Now, if you really looked for them, you could probably see them, but with everything else going on, you don't really notice it. So these shadows are still quite harsh and we can come in here now and we have this kind of slider that lets us dial this in. And maybe we just give it a bit of an orange tint just to kind of break it up a little bit more. Okay, so I think for the cloth that looks pretty good. The next thing we want to do now is we want to look at this bottle and let's turn it on and let's just see what by default we get. And while that's going, I just want to talk about the materials. So for the bottle itself, I have a glass render region here. Glass is quite slow to render with everything else going on. And I'm using this thin film with a max on noise here, just kind of gives it a slightly different look. And then I've got a glass material here with subsurface scattering. So it kind of gives us this deep, rich blue. And I'm using a ramp to kind of ramp it like that. And then I'm using another ramp from kind of a whitish to black to blend between these two materials. That's how I get this glass to go across. And then in the cap, I just have an old copper preset from the old materials. And then I have a displacement, which is just these lines. Um, and this comes from Travis Davis pack of displacement textures. It's got some really nice ones and it just kind of adds some detail in there. And then for these logos, again, I just have the same copper preset as up here just to kind of add these. Okay, so now obviously this doesn't look very good because our lighting is a little bit harsh. So we can kind of jump in here and we can fix that. So there's multiple ways that we can do this. The one way is that we can use light linking and just have these two lights affect the cloth and have other lights do the bottle. The other way is that we can use these lights to affect the diffuse of the bottle, but in the contributions, we can remove it from the reflection. So you'll see here that now I don't have that crazy harsh reflection on the bottle here. So I like to just remove that down and I'm gonna take it completely out of the transmission. So you see, we have a lot more control now. It is contributing to the scene, but it's not overblowing the whole bottle. And we can do the same with this full lights just to make sure I won't have any reflection or transmission. And now what we get is kind of a dull looking bottle, but uh, everything else is being affected the same way. And we can now set up some lights that just affect the bottle. So let's create another RS light. And we'll call this bottle right. And let's just make this a different shade of yellow. And what I'm gonna do with this one is like this one I'm going to just light link to only affect the bottles. Now, the easiest way to do this is instead of trying to get all these containers is just say, I want it to affect everything, which is everything I have here, except for this. So um, I'll do a star and then a carrot, and then I can just copy this and paste it in here. Let's undo this. Okay, so we've got this light now, and what I wanna do with this light is turn it sideways and move it out. Let's jump. So you can see now I'm getting this light from this side and just turn those off in the viewport and let's just make this light um, a lot bigger as well just so that it's coming and it's I have a big light on the side and if we turn these two lights off just so we can kind of see what this one light is doing it's creating this really nice light on the side and I want to just move it just so that it's just affecting the side of the light. And what I can also do with this one is use a texture. Again, I'll jump into my OD asset library. I'll go into lights and I will use a gradient linear. And the reason I use this light is because my friend Gonzalo uh, told me that it's really good for this. And he has a tutorial on a perfume bottle where he uses it and it looks really good. Now I just have to turn my light so that the gradient is facing the right way. And I think this is the right way. Okay, I think that's better. So you can see it has like a gradual fall off here. And now again, I just wanna move it so that it's wrapping around the side of the bottle here, but not the top there. Okay, we can maybe rotate it. All right, so let's just um, turn down the intensity of this. We can really push it in slightly closer. 
and let's just maybe reduce the size just so that it's in the right space. All right, so I think that's nice. If you look at the cap here, you have this really nice reflection here and a little bit on the bottle. I'm gonna do the same thing and this one's going to be the left and it's still got all the light linking and I can just flip this around And for this one, maybe what I want to do is just make this one a little bit thinner uh, on this axis and pull down the spread and maybe turn down the value just so that it's slightly different to the other side. All right, so now we have these two lights that are kind of illuminating the bottle. And if we take off our vellum, you'll see that it's wrapping around, but the vellum is kind of blocking it just a little bit. So we can try and Get this to work a little better. Let me double check that my gradient is actually the right way. So you can see this harsh line here. I want this on the other side. So this needs to be minus 90. Yeah, okay, that's what I wanted there. So this is the correct orientation of this light. And I guess then this one is also the wrong way. I need Y to be facing forward. So let's just switch this to be six and four. Okay, now I have the correct lighting. And it's very strong, but you can kind of see it's kind of going all the way through, which is quite nice. So let's just turn this down. And let's turn this one down. All right, so now this to me is looking a lot nicer. Let's turn in our background and our vellum. Okay, so we don't see vellum because these lights are only affecting our bottle and we need to move them forward so that vellum is not blocking it. All right, so that's starting to look quite cool. Let's add in these two lights. So now we start to see the bottle is taking a little bit more shape and it's starting to kind of look a lot nicer. One thing you'll notice is that you don't actually see these two logos. And so what I did now was I just grabbed another one of these and this is going to be logo. And I'm going to just affect the logo with this one or the label as I called it. So this label is the top label. So we'll just spin this around, turn off all these other lights and we can turn off the texture. All right, so now we have this kind of cool logo that's being illuminated here. This is a little bit bright. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate this and this is going to be now for label two. And so I can move this down so that I get this bottom label. And this one needs to be even thinner just so that it's highlighting just this bottom label. So you start to see this P, A, and A, which is enough. And if I turn all these lights on. So what I want to do here is just get this um, Z a little bit more lit up. So I can just move this light around to where it's hitting the Z. And then the Z's not like completely in shadow. And I find it a lot easier if I have no other lights to see what these lights are doing. Okay, that looks better. And then the bottom one, it's about the same angle. And if we jump forward a few frames, we can kind of get the vellum all the way in the middle. And let's just do a quick bucket render and see what we get. 
All right, so I think that is pretty close to what I got. I did a little bit of posts and I did some puzzle mats to get the cap and the logos and the bottles. So I could do a little bit of post on different elements. And obviously the lighting on these labels could be a little bit better, but in general, I think this is my approach. Before we go, I wanna just show you one other thing about how I approached this colorful one. And I'm gonna turn off the bottle just cause it's quite slow with this glass. And I'm going to jump into this vellum. So what I wanna do is I want to add a different color to each of these blobs so that I can shade them differently. If I have a look here, I have a class attribute. That's a different color per kind of blob or shape, or whatever you want to call these things. And what I want to do is I want to create an integer value that I can use in Redshift. Now I can just feed this value into a color and use that, but sometimes you get this kind of weird merge between the two. So I'm just going to use a small attribute wrangle. Now, if you don't want to use Vex, what you can do is you can use a color node and this will work just as well. But like I said, you get these, sometimes these slightly different uh, kind of fall off. So if I turn off my attribute, you can see now I have this color and it's cool because I have this seed and I have a zero to one uh, value of color because that's what this node will give me. But I can also kind of create my own here. So I can uh, create a fit class value and I can say fit zero one and say at class. And then what I want to do here is I can now multiply by a seed. So this is now going to give me a seed that I can create random ones. And then I'm just going to fit this between zero and one. So this is essentially doing the same thing as this color node. It's just creating a float value rather than a full vector color. And I need to add a random in here. This is not class. This is a random class. There we go. So now if I have a look at our fit class, I add in our seed, you can see now I get all these different seeds that are zero to one. So if I pop up my spreadsheet, you can see fit class is zero to one. Now the color, like I said, is very similar. It's a zero to one value, but it's giving me this full vector range, which I don't need. I just need this and I have control here. So let's pick something like that. What's kind of cool is if I add a uh, color in here and I use a ramp, I can use this fit class and now I can see uh, if I turn off my visualizer, I can see what this ramp is going to do. So sometimes I find it useful to kind of pick a color palette like this and set it up here and then copy this into Redshift because it's easier to dial it in because this is so quick. So let's set these to constant because I want these to be constant values and maybe I just want three colors. You can see now I have too many green and not enough yellow. So that's why I like to do it here because I can kind of move it in here. And now I'm getting a nice mix and maybe a few more green. And maybe I don't like the way that this is sorted. So I can just come in here and move this around until I find something that's a little bit more mixed up and maybe a few more blue. Okay, so I think that looks really nice. So I don't need to worry about this color. I'm just going to use this here and I'm going to use this ramp. So I'm gonna copy this parameter, hit save, jump into Vellum, and let's actually create a new one of these and apply it. And in here, I'm going to use a ramp and I'm just going to paste values. So I've got that in here. And here I'm going to use an RS point, an RS point attribute. And I know that this is going to be fit class. So I can pop that in here and now I want to use this value. So let's start this up again and have a look at what we got. Should be exactly the same because we haven't changed anything. It is, but if we pop this in, now we have these colors. So let's pop this into the diffuse color and hit render. So now we have these super saturated and bright colors. So let's kind of change these for something a little bit nicer. Now I'm just using the same colors that I used before so that it's a little bit easier. So you get something that looks like that. Now, obviously you can come in here and you can add in another one and make this one white. And now you get these, some that are pure white um, and you can change it. So if you want more blue ones, you can still move this around and do whatever you want. Now this was looking fine, but I wanted to kind of go with a different look. So instead of using this, I use a velvet texture. This velvet texture is super fun to use. It adds a kind of really nice soft vibe to your cloth. It looks really nice and kind of fuzzy, but what I ha think helps with this a lot is using a Fresnel node. Now, again, you can use the sheen, but when I do this kind of look, I like to use Fresnel. It gives me just a little bit more control. You can see how nice and 
kind of fluffy these look. I'm going to turn off this and this. And now uh, this is plugged into the wrong input. I want this to be in the facing color. Fresh. Okay, so now you start to see how this is starting to look very fuzzy. And maybe this is too strong. Let's go with that. And let's make this a little bit stronger. Uh, what I need to do here is make sure that I don't have this sheen turned on because obviously if I have both sheen and Fresnel, then they're kind of fighting against each other. And I don't need any backlight translucency for this. And that's pretty much how I got to this little fuzzy one. Um, it's kind of a neat trick to use the connectivity or the class attributes to feed into Vellum. Um, it lets you very easily uh, use different values. I think this texture can be a lot smaller. And possibly what would be good with this one is to use it as a displacement map, not just a bump texture, because it starts to uh, not work as well as a bump texture. And displacement looks a lot nicer. And that's what I ended up using with mine, but you kind of get the general idea with this bump map. And I think this Fresnel can be a little bit stronger. And let's quickly create a displacement map just so that I can show you where I ended up. Um, I used a really small value of this because displacement can get pretty intense. So let's jump in here and make sure tessellation is turned on. We will need quite a lot of tessellation for this texture specifically, but it's not so bad. All right, so you can see that it's still too strong. So I will just turn that down. All right, so I think that kind of gives you an overview. Obviously, the one that I did wasn't this blobby shape. It was the one with a lot more wrinkles. And so you get these kind of fuzzy wrinkled looking ones, whereas this one looks a little bit more smooth, which is why I ended up changing and going with the white texture for this one specifically. But this is kind of the approach that I used anyway. So I hope this gives you a cool overview of how I lit and shaded these. If you're interested in the hip files, jump into my Patreon where I will include this file and you can poke around and play and change whatever you like. So I'll see you soon for another tutorial.